Yo, 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 you tuning in to the Notion Podcast. This is your host, Dizzy D. Spill, and you are tuning in to a special episode of Cleaning Up the Culture. For those that have been a fan of the segments of Cleaning Up the Culture, um, I know you're probably excited and relieved to know that I'm still doing these different topics in, in this particular series. This one could be controversial. This one could be informative. I think it's all just in your perspective, but I definitely want to share mine and I want to share my beliefs and what I understand. This could be broken up into a series. Um, So with that being said, I am probably going to call this part one and the name of this uh, cleaning up the culture series is are black people sick are american black people sick there we go let's do that are american black people sick and i'm and i already know you're wondering what do you mean what do you mean where's he what's his angle us again is he is dizzy going the sambo route (laughs) no not at all so In this series of part one, I want to share with you the topic of the series um, that or I shouldn't say the topic. I'll say the subtopic of volume one. We're going to title this are black Americans sick and generations versus generations. Now, we all know living over here on the West in the United States that there's always been this competition, this conversation about generations. Some generations feel that they're smarter than previous generations. Some generations feel that they're stronger than previous generations. Um, Whether it's style, music, um, beliefs, uh, mental capacity, all of those things fall into these categories as far as in generations versus generations. I think right now in 2023, well, one of the main issues um, with generations is I feel like millennials are sitting right there in the middle. And even Gen X, because I think Gen X and millennials kind of mirror similar um, experiences, especially when we're talking about bad experiences. But I do believe that um, with Gen X and millennial and I, and I and I would like to say early millennials, not late millennials, because even there are some differences in that area with us. Right. And. It seems like there's a huge disconnect and this will all come together as the series drops with the subtopics of our uh, black Americans sick black people in America. And so with the subtopics of generations versus generations, I wanted to start out by teaching. One of the issues with the teaching between the two generations, I'll I'll speak for myself. I'm 35. I am considered a millennial. Uh, My wife is considered a millennial. Some of my closest, probably probably all of my closest friends are millennial. I think I have uh, um, a homie I work with who's Gen X right around the same age as my older brothers. But for the most part, the people that I deal with on a regular basis are the earlier millennials, 80s babies. You know what I mean? And so the thing is with the teaching is that I think when we got to be adults, millennials, we understood that the boomers had an experience with the silent generation, their parents. And there was a way things were done. There was a culture, there was a belief, um, there was only a certain or I would say limited amount of information that they were given. And so they had to work with that. And so with the baby boomers, our parents, they didn't have a lot of access to things that we have. Technology is different. The way you get information is different. There's more information to go off of than what they had to go off of. Um, We're understanding certain things that we thought were good for us are not good for us. We understand that certain things are good for us that we haven't probably been applying in our lives, whether it's health or or um, other conversations. But I think right now what has happened 
just from my personal experience and talking to people in my generation is that there's a huge lack of understanding because of the teachings. Uh, Most millennials don't want to whoop their kids from what I've came across. I'm not saying they don't. Most millennials come from a generation where they got their butt whooped. You understand what I'm saying? So even that right there, the teaching element is different. And I think that it's tough because when you use when 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 you talk about the, te- the it was supposed to be a lesson behind when you did get whooped. But even the things that were taught outside of corporal punishment, right? You have conversations, um, for example, on how to be in life, right? You you you're taught to cook. As far as the boomers, they were taught to cook. They were taught to clean. You had to have some kind of moral to yourself. Um, But you had to do something with yourself. And it seemed like you guys had to grow up pretty fast as far as boomers are concerned. And so when they're raising their kids, they're going off of those um, experiences, but they're not understanding. I find that a lot of them don't understand that the world that they prepared us for does not exist. So it's not that the teaching is ineffective. It's just it's obsolete in today's times. Not all the teaching, though. I do think there should be discipline. I do think that they were more financially disciplined. I think we're more financially literate than them, but they were more financially disciplined than us, right? Because they didn't have a lot of easy easy access to information. You didn't they didn't have a TikTok where somebody could say this is how you start a business or this is how you can uh clean a skillet or something like that. They didn't have that information just at their fingertips like we do. However, we have that information. And because sometimes we have an overload of information, we go 20 different directions with it. Or we just use that information to make ourselves appear intelligent and all knowing, which is annoying. Right. So. I think the difference in teaching, there should be more of an understanding between two generations. KRS-One has a video going around right now where he gives a great example of that. And I might screw it up, but I think the message and what he was saying is older people listening to younger people will have older people moving faster than other older people. Younger people listening to older people will have them moving faster and wiser amongst the younger people. So there's a huge disconnect when it comes to the teaching aspect that needs to be addressed and that definitely, definitely needs to be fixed. So I think um, boomers and millennials need to do a better job of listening. Boomers have to understand where millennials are coming from and millennials have to understand where boomers are coming from. Generation X young and old have to have to bridge that gap. And I'm going to be honest, if you are middle class or if you're lower middle class or if you have grown up poor, it's really important to listen to each other. I'm not saying do what each other says at every point and agree all the time. I'm saying to actually shut your mouth and try to listen to understand instead of listening to response to respond or compare. That is important. If you want to get a message to go around your community or around the people you care about, that's going to be effective and progressive. You have to shut your mouth, excuse me, and listen on both sides. And and there may be some things that is hard for you to hear, but that's what teaching is. A part of teaching is getting the right information to the person or the people that want it and need it and will do something with it. You know, Um, your job as a teacher, regardless of what you do or who you're teaching, is to give all the information you can the best way you can give it. Okay, so. I think that generations versus generations, that's where a huge hiccup is. I think the other issue, and I touched up on it earlier and I can go into detail, is discipline. Now, discipline isn't always about corporal punishment or um, making a forcing a person to see their error in every single error that they make. I think that for blacks, since that's the topic, we have struggled with the concept of discipline and as 
technology gets better and as awareness and understanding gets better, we have, I wouldn't say grown out of the way we discipline, but I think we've grown to where we have more options to be able to, to discipline um, our families, but also discipline ourselves with how we react and respond to things. Like I said, it's not always about punish, you know, punishing a child or punishing someone. This is also about, you know, how you conduct yourself. You know what I'm saying? Um, But to dive deeper into our culture, the way that we've disciplined, um, the way that children have been disciplined in the black culture stems from a form of slavery. In slavery, when a slave did something wrong that the master felt was wrong, we were whipped. And we took that concept as discipline and we whooped our kids with it. The only, I'm not going to say the only, one of the issues with doing that is fully understanding what's happened. And I think the reason why so many millennials try not to whoop their kids is because we've grown up to understand that that was a form of trauma. And for some reason, boomers don't, once y'all get y'all gray hairs and your retirement money, y'all forget how hard y'all really were. And, oh, I don't remember saying that. or I don't remember calling you that or, or whooping you that much. Or you have the vulnerable uh, boomers that knew that the, knew what they were doing and probably didn't feel good after they did it a couple times like well you know I'm sorry and yeah those things created trauma for us and so sometimes when you when you see the younger generation and how they're dealing with their kids you may not approve of the fact that well you know they nah, nah, wouldn't have had that that wouldn't have happened in my house or they wouldn't be talking back and all that all that other stuff they're trying to learn different ways to discipline outside of that because there it is possible there are children there are other cultures that have found and learned different techniques to um um control the behavior of your kids we have also found out that more kids are diagnosed with different disabilities so in the earlier time periods whether it was your uncle or your cousin that just had some kind of condition you know the older generation like well they ain't right or they got an issue and they still got discipline and they still got whooped on just like a kid that didn't have a condition so now that we're in a time period where there's more uh, where mental health is is actually a popular conversation, people are trying to find different methods and different understandings with dealing with discipline and even the verbal abuse. You know, we come from a time period where it's a lot of cursing and a lot of screaming and a lot of yelling. And unfortunately, for our generation and even Gen X can co-sign this. Um, a lot of that energy wasn't for, for us. You know, you probably had a hard, probably had a rough job, probably had terrible coworkers, probably just had a terrible experience overall. And then on top of that, your kid does something. Well, you can't do anything to the person that cut you off on a freeway. You can't do anything to that supervisor that didn't like you. Um, or, or always messing with you or that friend that said a slick comment before you got off the phone, but that kid, that kid, yeah, you know, I'm gonna deal with you. I may be, I might, I'm not, I might not be able to deal with everything else, but I'm gonna deal with this kid, you know? And I think a lot of us can vouch for times where it's like, Hey, every, we didn't earn every single, uh, disciplinary action and we didn't earn every single whooping. So there has to be some understanding on both sides. Um, more so, I'm going to be honest, on, on our parents, on boomers. Boomers, y'all have to understand that, that regardless if that's all you knew and that's how you were raised, we understand that, but that still has an effect and had an effect on us. So we're trying to find a different way and a better way um, to handle our children and to raise our children than you guys uh, learned. So on the, uh, I would say on our end and and Gen X, um, we have to understand that that's something that was inherited by the silent generation and the generation before them. That's all they knew is, you know, all right, child, get out of line. You do this, you do that. You stay out of grown folks conversations and, and all that other stuff. That's all they knew. But the only The only understanding, I'm going to be honest, 
speaking from the place that I'm in, the only thing I should have is understanding. I don't think there should be any compassion or anything because y'all got to understand it. We are the are the way that we react, the way that we feel, the way that our mental is, is a result of how you guys did things as far as in discipline and even Sometimes that barrier that way that we may have with each other in conversation where we might seem a little bit defensive or intense is because some of us felt like we could not defend ourselves when you guys were wrong because nobody's perfect. Right. So that's one of the things um, I'll say about the discipline um, aspect of it. Um, the other thing I will say is emotions. Um, it, it, it seems to me just, it seems to me, and again, this is my opinion. Um, some of my peers thoughts, it seems to me when it comes to emotions, we might have a little bit more emotional intelligence than the generations before us. And I think every generation thinks that the generation under them is softer. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I even have to catch myself talking about Gen Z and um, later millennials like, oh, man, you don't know about this. You don't man, we had to drink out of a water hose when we was kids. And we only had a couple times we can come in and ha- in and out the house. And, and as I think about that stuff at times, I'm like, what I really want to do my kids like that. And. It's something that we all got to check ourselves on because that we we come from a different time period. It's our inner zeitgeist telling us like, hey, this is how we roll, but we got to kind of keep rolling with the punches. But man, still, why you roll like that? It's, It's a weird way of thinking that we do, but specifically talking to the generation before us, the generation that raised us and taught us a lot of great things and some not so great things. We have to have a better understanding when it comes to emotions. And I'll say for the older generations, the best way that we can understand y'all is y'all being transparent. If you don't want to have the hard conversations about your childhood, about your life and your rhyme or reason on why you operate this way and why you're built this way, then you can you cannot demand an understanding of why your kids, your adult children operate the way that they do you have to have some conviction towards yourself too and it goes both ways you know the our generation has to understand our parents we have to understand just the sacrifices that they made and what kind of impact that had on them what dreams they might have had to been been put on hold because of what they were told or circumstances those conversations need to be had. A big problem in our culture, as I go down these subtopics, is we have a bad habit of putting a Band-Aid on shit and thinking that it's okay. All right, that's a gunshot wound. We'll just get a Band-Aid. Okay, that's a bazooka wound. Your arm is hanging off, so we're going to put a big Band-Aid and some tape on it. That's not going to work. There's no way that that's going to work. So um, the respect has to be there for our elders. But at the same time, there has to be understanding on the emotions. We can't you. I know that our parents and I know that older generations want us to be strong. And I get that we live in crazy times right now where strength is definitely um, an attribute that you need to have. But you guys have to be patient and and you have to be specific and you have to explain the why the patience needs to be. Listen, I might have to say this more than three times. You have to be strong. The understanding is look at the world around you. I don't even recognize the world anymore. You have to have that strength to get through the next day and understand that you the sun will come out again. You can't tell generations, uh, y'all weak, or that's, you know, y'all, y'all a little soft, man. I don't know your, your, your cell phones and you got all this tech and this, that, and the other, but that's not really a weakness because that's the way the world is operating. It's no different than when you took the internet out and all you had was hammers, a few channels on TV, and, you know, a little bit of knowledge that you and your community had, you know, nobody's going to be like, oh, you were weak. This is what the world is today. This is how the world works. And whatever they did before that is 
what was obsolete to what you guys were doing in your younger days. So there has to be a, a, a definite understanding and a clear understanding of, hey, this is why we need you to be strong. We are not as strong as we used to be. So we need you guys to be strong. You're going to have to carry us, carry yourself and carry your kids. But you, we need you to be strong. But at the same time, reassure and, and let people know, let your, the younger generations know, yo, it's OK. to. You're going to have times where you feel hopeless. You're going to have times where you're depressed. And these are some methods that I think you should go through or you or, or how can I help? I think a lot of millennials and, and Gen X wish that we heard more of how can I help instead of, well, I helped you with this and I helped you with that. And it can't go like that because your help may not be the help that they need or the way that you're helping may not be an effective way of help in which that person or that community or those group of people may need. How can I help you is important. That's why you hear it in customer service and fast food and everything, because you, you have to tell them what you want and what you need and, and how you need it. So as far as the emotion aspect of it, that's extremely important. Um, legacy and image is another one The the thing about that is I, I think that as you get older, you fear, you know, what your legacy is going to look like, um, when it's being passed down and how it's going to look when you're gone and you, you want to have this mindset of like, yo, things are going to be good. Everything is going to be okay. And I get that. I understand that. Um, but when it comes to your legacy, when it comes to your image, you have to explain those things on a regular basis. It should be a reminder. I think that myself and my peers should be reminding each other and reminding our children on a daily basis how important um, our legacy is. And most importantly, how much of an effect your image can have. Um, I read once in a book that I've read a couple times, um, guard your reputation with your life. And as you see, social media can destroy a person's reputation overnight. And sometimes it's out of your hands. It just depends on how you maneuver. Right. And I think that we have to do a better job of how we conduct ourselves. I know we live in a time period where everybody has something to say and everybody can say it and they can reach millions or, or sometimes billions of people. But as black Americans, we have to understand the ramifications behind the image that we let other people put on us. So I think that we shouldn't allow anybody, we shouldn't allow anybody to label us but at the same time we don't want to make it easy for people to give us a specific label that we're going to have a hard time combating or arguing against because of the way we've conducted ourselves and I think the best way to handle that is to understand the people before us and why they may say don't carry yourself a certain type of way I don't believe in everything that we're told not to do because some things just don't make any sense and i and, and there's no proof of it making any sense but i do believe how we conduct ourselves is something that we have to start with in public and in private the kind of conversations that we have amongst each other and about each other when we're present and when we're not present a lot of those things should cease now that doesn't mean thought we're going to get rid of gossip we're going to get rid of ghetto and ratchet and all that stuff it's always going to be little remnants of it here and there because it's in every culture it just affects us the worst from what it seems um we have to do a better job coming together with our elders and our elders coming together with us to agree on things about how we're going to carry ourselves and how we're going to protect our personal and our family legacies. And we don't do it by saying, oh, old people, they don't know. They forgot who they used to be when they were young. And it doesn't work with older people saying, well, you know, look at how you guys carry yourselves. Look at how you guys dress and this, that and the other. 
there has to be a rhyme or reason on why certain things are said. And then there has to be a solution. My biggest issue in today's times is and it's a clearly under it's a clear understanding with me being more involved on YouTube that people like to talk about the problem more than the solution. Or they only talk about the problem and never have a solution. I'm not a fan of that. I don't care how big you are. I don't care how famous you are. If you're always coming on a platform every day talking about a problem and you don't have at least two to three effective solutions um, from your end on how you believe it'll work, I want to hear it. And it kind of shows me what your intentions are. So with legacy and image that's another thing that the generations have to have better understanding and work together on because it's because what we're doing right now is not working. When I break down a lot of these subtopics and what I'm talking about, a lot of the things that we've been doing that we continue to do don't work anymore. They don't. So respecting our elders, this is a tough one. Not that it's hard to respect elders, but there's so many layers to why this is conflict. Um, Sometimes what happens and what's happened for decades in our culture is we're taught to respect people that don't respect us. And that just, uh, that's not flying. I, if, if I feel like as a parent right now, if I have to train my children to respect people that are connected to their lives, that don't acknowledge their lives, that don't have conversations about them, that don't, and I mean like progressive conversations, but don't interact with them. It's hard for me because of what I went through growing up and what a lot of other people have probably went through growing up to sit up there and be like, yeah, you respect them just because they're older. I would rather not have my child around somebody. That way, in my opinion, it's like, Okay, if I don't have my kid around you, they can't disrespect you. And if I don't have my kid around you, I can't force them to respect somebody that 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 clearly has shown that they don't care about them. However, when you do have your children or when we do have um, the youth around older people, there should be some respect there. These people got to this point in their life seeing things that you've never seen and possibly things that you've never you never will see or have to experience. So there should be some respect for our elders. Um, I came in a house, came up in a house. My older siblings came up in a house where we say, yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Majority of my family in the South still refers to their elders as yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Because that was a way that we acknowledged respect. And I don't see it a lot. And I don't think that's a bad thing. I I think that I I wouldn't mind um, raising my kids to have that same concept. But elders are important. I just know that we have to spend more time having real conversations with our elders and not let our elders get so caught up in modern society with gossip and social media. And because, you know, they're on Facebook and they sometimes things are new to them that have been old to us since we first got an account. And so I think that We have to really cherish and and honor our elders by getting that history. That's something that I've been taught by my mom about our family history and our culture and and, and all of these different things that would help us um, know the truth about our family and know the truth about our lives. That stuff, uh, those conversations are precious. And once you don't have the opportunities to have them anymore, they're gone forever. So I think that is a, a real huge reason why we should respect our elders and spend time. Those recipes from the older uh, your, your mother and your father and your grandmothers get them things that you didn't know about them, ask the questions, ask how their childhood was, ask how do they see the world, ask what they think about how things can make the world for you and your children a better place. Have real conversations with your parents because when they're not here anymore, they're gone. I have told my mom on dozens of occasions when she told me something that's interesting over the phone, I say, nope, email it to me. You know, and it doesn't mean that I don't want to talk it just means a lot of times, you know, she may call me when I'm really busy working on something and, and, and I don't want to lose sight of that information. So, nope, email it to me. 
you know, or all right, I have time to talk about it. And after we talk about it, please email me what you just told me, because we live in a society where there's just an abundance of information. So many things are are coming at us in all different directions as far as information is concerned. So respecting our elders, I still stand on that. I still believe that it disgusts me when I see young people um trying to bully or talk to older people crazy. I hate seeing it in hip hop. I hate seeing younger people go uh, after older artists. I'm not really a fan of the older artists talking down to the younger artists instead of putting your arm around them and saying, let me guide you in the right direction or let me give you some pointers. Uh, I really appreciate a Buster Rhyme speech at the uh, BET Awards talking about bridging the gap, but it, it shouldn't just be in hip hop in the African-American culture. It should be on all levels. If you are a successful African-American and you identify as an African-American because some people be forgetting what they look like, you need to be there. You need to find people. You need to give them information and resources. You can't sit back in the bleachers talk and, and try to coach the game. And and you really don't care what happens in the game. You just want to be a critic. There's there's positions for people like that too, but those people don't really have an effect on the growth of the culture. They just have an effect on their growing their reputation. So um definitely got to respect our elders for sure we definitely got to do a better job with respecting our elders and do a better job with making sure um with making sure that we spend time with them because they're not stupid they're not uh useless they're very useful and i think sometimes the frustration with us is we know how much that they can help us but maybe the, the order is too tall when we ask for help and I think elders need to do a better job of hearing us when we say, I need help. Sometimes we have a hard time asking you guys for help by simply saying, hey, I need your help because of maybe past experiences with how you made us feel when we talk about help or use the word help. So we have to do a better job with that. We have to do a better job explaining to them why their help is valuable. And I think our elders need to do a better job with accepting the fact that, hey, we still may need help. No matter how strong you were at the age uh, when you were our age, we still need help. This world is 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 jacked in so many ways. So um, that's what I'll say about our respecting the elders, appreciating the youth. I have to do a better job at appreciating the youth. Um, I find myself sounding like a grumpy older person saying, oh, man, these young people, man, the way that it is right now and blah, 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 blah. Well, you know, there's been a lot of tablets and cell phones and social media and a whole lot of screens being put in front of these younger people's faces since they were little kids, you know, and the parents that did that, that was like a unique way of like, okay, let me calm them down. Let me help them. But then it comes to a point where now technology is raising your kids. It used to be a thing when I was a kid where it's like, you don't want money to raise your kids. Now it's like, you don't want technology to raise your kids. So you have to have, um, we have to have uh, more patience with the younger generation, but we also have to have um, an appreciation because there's this time that we're living in. There's so many young millionaires and billionaires because of their talent and the way that they've used the resources that are available to them. And I commend them. And I even envy the fact that you guys got these resources um, now that I didn't have when I was your age. And it's just, yo, but I do appreciate younger generations. There's a few younger artists in music. There's phenomenal actors. There's a lot of younger people getting into fields that I didn't even know about or that have been made more socially acceptable as far as careers. So um, we have to do a better job. I think early millennials, I think Gen X, I think baby boomers. I really think we need to embrace the younger generation because um, our generation blended with their generation is going to be the per people running the world in all of these different um, positions, whether it's politics, whether it's the medical field, whether it's law enforcement, whether it's upholding the law with judges and lawyers and contractors, um, we have to share knowledge. We have to share our admiration and love and respect for each other and what we contribute to the world. So um, my apologies when I um, seem a little harsh or seem overly critical 
on the younger generation. That's something that I have to work on. That's something that we all have to work on. They're not stupid. Um, they're not dumb. Uh, they're very intelligent. I do think that there's things that they can work on no different than there's things that our generation and the boomers can work on. But for the most part, um, the younger generation have done some awesome things. I know my niece and nephews, when they were kids, they were doing things that I was just like, how are you doing that? And sometimes I wonder um, if I could go back in time, what would I have done different to try to embrace their skills to where they're billionaires and millionaires or working in Silicon Valley and things like that. So I do think that we need to have more of appreciation for the younger um, the younger generation. We got, we got to appreciate the youth. We should always appreciate the youth just like we appreciate the elders. They both contribute different things to the world. Um, I got to make a couple statements before I get out of here on this uh, on this volume one. <sighs> Older generations. I know it sounds like here he go again. Well, well you said we got to bridge the gap. We got to work with each other. Do you, you picking at us? I, I think I just need to help you guys understand more and i think some some of these videos are the best way to do it because you can't interrupt you can't interject you got to leave your comment after you hear everything hopefully you listen to everything before you leave your comment or make your statement stop telling the younger generations the kids that you've raised to go get therapy for things that you did to them or things that you didn't help them with I encourage therapy, but in the midst of encouraging therapy, if you're going to do that, part of their therapy is having hard conversations with them about things that you've been avoiding when they were young and you had the power to silence them. You have to understand that is damaging enough telling them to go talk to somebody else about things that you and the people around them have put them through. That's crazy. It's not nonsense to recommend therapy. But therapy isn't always the end all be all for everybody. Some people can go to therapy and have a terrible time. I've talked to people personally that have had therapists fall asleep on them during sessions. Oh, and I know you're with your responses. Oh, they need to get a better therapist. That's still damaging because it's like, yo, this is the one place I have for help. Imagine being robbed and the police show up and then they just faint and fall asleep. Oh, man, I haven't had any sleep. I've been working a 16 hour shift. And it's like, oh, that's it for me. Like, that's stupid. Like, again, it's that band aid over a wound concept that we have to get past as a culture. Encourage your kids. Hey, listen, I see that you've been struggling. And I think therapy would help. I'm even willing to go with you if you think that'll help us and our relationship. But if there's something that you can talk to me about that you've maybe been too afraid or too timid or, or too cautious to talk to me about, we can talk about it. We don't have to talk at each other. We don't have to fight each other. We don't have to argue with each other. Let's just get a better understanding of each other. Stop just, well, you need to go talk to somebody else to work on that. Sometimes their therapy, that the reason why they're going is just you. Now, we all have multiple different problems, but the truth is, is a bulk of that issue on why you're encouraging to go is you. I'm not saying all of you guys, but you know what I'm talking about when I say this for you guys that probably gave your children a hard time. This can still be healed. OK, this can be healed. This can help and possibly fix something. So just stop making that that statement and then just going about your day like well I told you to go do this like it takes more than that we're talking about the mental and the mind is very very important the mind can't operate any of this correctly it, it, it can't operate any of this correctly if it's not in um, the proper state or a, or a functioning state you know what I'm saying so I'm just I'm just throwing that out there from experience and understanding um just listen to you might need to listen to this whole thing again. I'll I'll close with that. You might need to listen to this again to really understand um 
what's going on and what's been going on. But the generations versus generations, we need to do more talking. We need to have great, uplifting, positive conversations. And we need to also have very tough, very frustrating, tear jerking, uncomfortable conversations with one another. Um, that's a great start, in my opinion, with rebuilding our community and the family. First, the family was destroyed and then our community was destroyed because there's no family to nourish it and, and keep it going. So we need to have these conversations. We need to talk more than just holidays or because we haven't talked in a few days. And we need to have conversations that are not always going to be the best when you hang up the phone because we have a lot of undoing that we need to do in our community. So that's my take on volume one, generations versus generations on the main topic of um, are black Americans sick? So until next time, I am your host, Dizzy D Spill. You've been tuning in to the Notion Podcast. Please follow the Notion Podcast on all platforms. We're definitely on YouTube. We're definitely on Twitter. We're everywhere. So follow us. Please leave your comments. I don't care if you disagree with me. Let's get this conversation started. Let's. I, I don't have all the answers. I am not sway. All right. I don't have all the answers. Give me some answers. Give better feedback than the feedback that I'm giving because I want to see progress more than anything else. Until next time, peace.